Motogazi V73 2017. It is difficult to check the wear on the rear brake pads with the rear tire on, but extremely easy to check and replace them if needed with the tire off. So always check the condition of the pads whenever you change the rear tire. With the rear tire off, it's very easy to see that these brake shoes are just worn down to nothing. There are no uh, wear marks left. They're down to about a sixteenth of an inch. So they need to be replaced. And this is a good time to do it since it's really easy to get to right now since the rear wheel's off. Uh, you just only take a five millimeter and you stick those in there and we'll under the I'm not doing it. Looks like that one's really already loose. So it looks like it had Loctite on it, as you can see, to keep it in place. Pull it out, yeah, they're just pins, as you can see, and there's two of them. So we'll do the other one here, too, and get that out. And then these up, uh, you can fall right out. Those pins look really pretty good. I'll, of course, rub them clean, but there's, there's no rust or anything on them. They certainly did have Loctite on them. So I'll reinsert them with Loctite when I get through. And here you can see the pads. They are really wore out. Uh, the new pad, which I impair the difference. I mean, see, there's the new pad with the rear marks. There's almost nothing left, and there's quite a bit of that one. And as you can see, they're they're perfect replacements. So they're going to fit right in there nicely. And we'll stick those in next. Looks like they're either or. Yeah, either or. Remember that is they can go on either side. Uh, the manual doesn't really call for it, but. Always put a little bit of tiny bit of lube on these back sides. Yeah, I'm smear that out even. And I also put uh, a bit a little so bit of lube on the pins. Of course, you've got to be careful not to get any of that lube on the face of the disc or the brake disc. But that would kind of you know defeat the you purpose. Without the them brake smooth. pads in here, the pins should be able just to drop straight down into those little hole meeting holes uh, with the other pads in there, so they both go in there correctly. There's a couple. There's a little bit of spring in there that'll kind of keeps the pressure on those uh, pads. So you sometimes have to push up in uh, to make sure they fall all the way through. So we'll give that a try. I'll right. we'll move that out. Okay. Put the two pads together. And I'm gonna slide them up into here like that. And I'll put this one pad in first, I guess. Uh, not wanting to go in. I really didn't want to go in, so I really had to push tight up against those springs. I actually had to use this. See how they move a little bit back to get them to line up so they line up with their pinholes. That one lines up pretty well, and that one lines up pretty well. So now I'm guessing I'm ready for the second one. I may have to do the same thing here. Just push that up fairly tight. Uh, that spring's going to want to work against it. Ah, there she dropped right in. Perfect. Then apply the Loctite and retighten them securely. Keep them in place. Nice and tight, Loctite in place. I'm going to separate that again like this to get them apart. I'll put that piece of wood in there, which is just a little bit thicker than the rotor. Uh, to make sure, of course, that it will open up wide enough uh, for the rotor to insert easily. If you can't open it that far, you may have too much fluid in your reservoir. If so, unscrew the caps to fill the screws. You want to make sure this is meticulously clean around here because you do not want to get any contaminants into your brake fluid. Uh, can't think of a faster way to ruin the system. So the and lift up this little plastic thing. Put it again on a rag and lift off this little thing here. Now you can see there's, there's moisture in here. And I understand that that collects water sometimes. So I'm just going to empty that out and again put it on my absolutely clean rag. As you can see, my reservoir is completely full after pushing those back in. Uh, a lot more than it actually needs to be because here's your sight level. I'll close it out, but take a little spoon or something or a little rag. Maybe I'll take this a little bit out to make sure you don't get any fire burn. Let that soak up some of that liquid. See now, it's removed quite a bit and I shouldn't have any trouble opening that further. And then of course, when I get the whole thing back together, I'll make sure that I still have enough uh, brake oil or fluid in there. So, let me put the little 
rubber back on, we put the little plastic back on, and we put the top back on for it to be. And we'll just screw them back in. Just snug, remember we just honey. Nothing more than snug. Okay, absolutely perfect. I can remove all this uh, precautionary material I had laying around. And that that I used, I'll take out into the garbage. garbage spacer. Everything is very good. Remove it a little bit. Both on the outside and on the inside where the shaft will actually go. And replace that. So it'll slide on that nice and shaft itself needs to be lubricated slightly. There we go, we'll leave that on there. Then we'll start to put it into place. Screw that rear pin in. This one's not too tight, so I want to be able to move as I push this other, other, this other pin all It's all back through. together. Took it for a short ride around the block to warm everything up, make sure everything felt good, and it did. Now, of course, it's time to check the final fluid levels. We'll zoom in here a little bit, and we'll take a look. I don't know if you can see it as well as I can through the camera lens, but it's right perfect. Just magnificently at the right level. How lucky I am. 